All right. Good evening, one and all. My name is Somil Shah. In this video, I'm going to be sharing best architecture for Flask REST APIs. If you're working with backend, probably you might be wondering what kind of API or what kind of architecture you want to use. So there are a lot of architectures you might um, encounter. You might just, so if you are a beginner or if you are not experienced in programming, you might just write everything in one file and make it run. But nowadays guys, things are changing pretty quickly. Market is changing. The best architecture right now in the market, I think is with the Dockers and Kubernetes. One of such uh, example that I wanted to share here is, I have a REST API. So let me walk you through the architecture, what the architecture looks like. So let's assume you have clients. So the client will first comes to, I mean, it's not new, but I've, I've done everything in Docker. So basically the client comes whenever any request is made, it's, it's gonna come to the Nginx uh, gateway, which is running on port 80. The Nginx gateway will basically route the traffic to w, uh, UWSGI proxy, which is hearing on 8080. The UWS GI is basically creating uh, multiple instance of your REST APIs, which is let's say your REST API is working on port one, port two, port three, port four, port five. Now, if a client one comes in, so if this client comes in, it comes to the Nginx, it comes to WSGI, it's gonna route and it's gonna come here where my mouse is, right? So it's gonna come to the port one. Second client comes in, it will be redirected to the port two. Third client comes in, port three, port four. So this would be an amazing architecture. Everything is running on Docker and you can create multiple fleets of uh, your Docker images. You can scale it up, you can scale it down, however you want. This is the one of the best thing I think everyone should follow in software engineering. Um, so this is the architecture that I wanted to share. Has Nginx server, has WSGI proxy gateway, has multiple instances you're running. Everything is in a Docker container. Everything is isolated. There's a networking between these containers or between these Docker images. Um, so it's pretty cool and it's just amazing. So let me show you a demo. So this is the architecture. Basically, here you can see I have a Flask and the Nginx. So app.ini, basically this uh, creates uh, multiple threads and multiple process of your um, API and it's gonna work, all uh, right? That's the Docker file, which is based on Alpine, Archite Alpine uh, operating system, right? Then this is the requirements.txt for the Flask app. This is your actual Flask route, foo route, right? Then I have an Nginx, I have a Docker file from Nginx. I have an nginx.conf file server. And at the end, I have a docker.yaml file. The docker.yaml file basically defines all the configuration. So the build name of Flask and Nginx. And when I run everything, here you can see, uh, actually let me uh, put it down for a while. And now let me start up. <coughs> so Docker compose up. This is gonna start the Nginx server and create multiple instances. So let's wait. So it started. Now, let me show you a demo of this architecture. Let me actually minimize this. So if I make a request here, you can see uh, core zero served that request. But if I do it multiple times, it will actually switch the core. Check this out, okay? So you see core one. So when a lot of requests were coming on the port, so it, it, is, it is basically switching the port. So here you can see PID seven, PID nine, it started creating multiple processes. So guys, this is one of the best architectures you can ever implement for your REST APIs backend. I can also include a lot of more stuff here in my architecture. I can include a messaging queue between uh, these REST API endpoints. So one thing that is missing here is, um, I think, of course, after this, the data is gonna go back, right? Oops, I messed up everything. Let me just complete this. So try to bring this here. For some reason, it does not want to come this side. <laughs> That's fine. So let's make it here. Oops, disappeared. Right, no worries. Uh, it's fine. So basically I just wanted to complete this. So this data will go back to the clients, right? So through this uh, entire journey path. So this is the code or whatever, the architecture that I wanted to show you. I'm gonna write a nice LinkedIn blog with all of these um, in detail. I uh, hope you would like it. Um, 
so these are the best practices that i i, I usually started uh, following like uh, creating a virtual and creating a requirements or txt um, creating separate doc- docker images and then making a yaml file one docker yaml file running that uh, multiple fleets of um, docker containers right so i hope you have enjoyed this uh, small walk through of this project if you have really enjoyed it please do give me a like if you have any more suggestions and if you think this can be uh, taken even one one step one step uh, further uh, please uh, let me know um, i think of course i can add a caching unit here so of course this is running like multiple docker like for container like for the apis and container for nginx so i can also add a small caching container like redis right so of course a lot of things can be done this is the best architecture that i follow if you have any more questions on this architecture please let me know and um, by the way the code the source code would be there officially on my linkedin blog i'm writing a nice blog on it so hopefully you would love it uh, once again thank you for love and support as usual um, keep coding keep smiling keep working hard every day and uh, see the magic so see you guys in the next video goodbye